History is full of volcanic fury, mountains that can wipe cities off the map in moments and rewrite the course of civilization. They're a stark reminder of the planet's raw, untamable power, a force that can sleep for centuries only to wake up with unimaginable violence. We're fascinated by their dramatic histories, by the stories of destruction and survival. But what if the greatest danger wasn't the deafening roar of an eruption, but the deep, unsettling silence that comes before it? What if the most dangerous volcano in the world isn't one that's rumbling, but one that's gone quiet? Mount Vesuvius, the infamous killer of Pompeii, hasn't truly erupted since 1944. It's the longest quiet spell the volcano has had in the last 500 years. For the millions who live in its shadow and for the scientists who watch its every breath, this long silence is becoming deafening. It's a quiet that forces us to ask a terrifying question. Is the volcano just sleeping or is it quietly recharging for an eruption unlike anything the modern world has ever faced? To really understand the threat Vesuvius poses today, we have to go back in time to the year 79 AD. The Roman cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, and Stabiae were thriving in the shadow of a mountain they saw as a gentle green giant. They had no word for volcano and no idea they were living next to a killer. But the eruption that came wasn't some slow-moving river of lava. It was a VEI-5 explosion of unbelievable force that blasted a column of gas, ash, and rock miles into the stratosphere. For the people of Pompeii, the first sign of doom was a rain of light pumice stones, unnerving but not immediately fatal. What came next, however, was total annihilation. The eruption column collapsed, unleashing a series of pyroclastic surges these were superheated clouds of ash and gas that moved at over 100 miles per hour, with temperatures hitting 300 degrees Celsius. Nothing could survive them. They moved with the speed of a hurricane and the heat of a furnace, instantly carbonizing wood, vaporizing soft tissue, and burying entire cities within hours. The cataclysm claimed an estimated 16,000 lives, preserving its victims as haunting voids in the hardened ash. This wasn't just an eruption, it was a demonstration of Vesuvius's character. It's a volcano that doesn't just destroy, it erases. So what makes Vesuvius so incredibly violent? The answer lies deep underground in the chemistry of its magma. Vesuvius is a stratovolcano, a classic cone-shaped mountain built from layers of hardened lava and ash. But unlike the runny lava of Hawaiian volcanoes, Vesuvius is fed by magma that's thick, sticky, and full of dissolved gases. Think of it like a soda bottle that's been shaken violently. The thick magma acts like a cork, trapping a tremendous amount of gas pressure beneath it. When that pressure finally blows, the result isn't a gentle flow, but a catastrophic, explosive release. Adding to the danger is its unique structure. Vesuvius is actually a volcano inside a volcano. The modern cone sits inside the giant collapsed crater of a much older volcano known as Mount Sama. This nested design is proof of a long, violent history of powerful eruptions. Scientists at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, or INGV, study this complex system relentlessly. They know the volcano's plumbing is intricate, and its history is one of long naps followed by sudden, violent awakenings. The 79 AD event was just one chapter in a very long story of destruction. The ghost of Pompeii looms large, but it's a huge mistake to think of 79 AD as a one-off event. Vesuvius didn't just go back to sleep after burying Roman cities. Its entire history is a rhythm of destruction. In 472 AD, another major eruption threw a cloud of ash so far that it reportedly reached Constantinople. But the most devastating eruption after the Romans happened in 1631. 
After more than a century of quiet, the volcano roared back to life. While smaller than the Pompeii event, it was still a catastrophe, unleashing deadly pyroclastic flows and mud flows that killed thousands of people who had built their lives on the volcano's fertile slopes. After 1631, Vesuvius entered a new phase. It started erupting more often, but with less intensity, in what's known as open conduit activity, where pressure was released more regularly. This era ended with the eruption of 1944. Right in the middle of World War II, with Allied forces stationed in Naples, the volcano put on a spectacular show of lava fountains and ash clouds. The eruption destroyed several villages and even melted the fabric wings of Allied bomber planes. It killed 21 people, and most importantly, it marked the end of the volcano's centuries-long period of frequent burps. Since 1944, Vesuvius has been silent. The conduit that had been open for 300 years is now plugged, and the pressure is building once again. And that brings us to today. Vesuvius has been quiet for over 80 years, its longest period of rest since its last cycle of activity began. On the surface, it's a picture of calm. Tourists hike its trails, and the city of Naples sprawls ever closer to its base. But this silence is exactly what makes volcanologists so uneasy. A long, dormant period at a volcano like Vesuvius doesn't mean the threat is gone. It often means the pressure is building toward a much more explosive eruption. The Vesuvius Observatory, a branch of the INGV, monitors the volcano 24-7, searching for any sign that the sleeping giant is stirring. And there are signs. While the official alert level remains green, the volcano is not dead. It's breathing. Scientists constantly detect low-level seismic activity, tiny microquakes deep within the magmatic system. In any given week, instruments can record over a hundred of these tremors. They're too small for residents to feel, but to scientists, they're whispers from the deep, subtle hints of stress and fluid movement. They show that the magma chamber, located about eight kilometers down, is active. This isn't a volcano that's just sleeping. This is a system that is quietly, invisibly recharging. The story gets even more complicated when you look at Vesuvius's very active neighbor. Just west of Naples lies Campi Flegre, or the Burning Fields. It's not a typical mountain, but a sprawling supervolcano caldera, and it's home to around half a million people. Vesuvius and Campi Flegre aren't entirely separate. Scientists believe they tap into the same deep magmatic system. Some even describe them as two connected balloons. Pressure changes in one can affect the other. And lately, Campi Flegre has been sending some alarming signals. Since 2023, the area has been hit with intense periods of bradyseism, the slow rising and falling of the ground. The ground has been lifting, cracking buildings and triggering relentless earthquake swarms. In May 2024, a magnitude 4.4 earthquake shook the region, the strongest in 40 years. While Italian volcanologists say there's no magma rising to the surface right now, the non-stop unrest is a stark reminder that the entire Naples area is a geological hot zone. The frantic activity at its sister volcano only adds to the sense of dread about Vesuvius's long, ominous silence. So, what would happen when Vesuvius erupts again? Italy's Civil Protection Agency has modeled the most likely scenario. It's not a full repeat of the massive 79 AD event, but a smaller, medium-energy explosive eruption. But smaller, in this context, is still terrifying. The eruption would start with a column of ash and gas punching several kilometers into the sky. Then, the real danger would be unleashed, pyroclastic flows. These superheated avalanches would cascade down the volcano's flanks at hundreds of kilometers per hour, incinerating everything in their path for up to 15 kilometers. For the roughly 700,000 people living in the designated red zone at the foot of the volcano, 
there would be almost no chance of survival. Beyond the reach of the flows, the danger would come from above. A thick blanket of ash and rock would rain down with the wind deciding its path. Naples, a city of over two million people, would be at high risk of roof collapses under the sheer weight of the ash. The air would be unbreathable, water supplies would be contaminated, and air travel across a huge part of Europe would be shut down. Even a medium eruption would create a humanitarian disaster worse than anything the volcano has produced in its recorded history. Faced with this terrifying certainty, Italian authorities do have a plan. The Vesuvius Red Zone covers 25 towns and parts of Naples itself, home to around 700,000 people. The National Emergency Plan calls for the complete evacuation of this zone. Scientists believe they can give about two weeks' warning before an eruption, which would trigger a 72-hour window to get every single person out. But let's be real. There is no world where this goes smoothly. Imagine trying to evacuate a city the size of Denver through a maze of ancient narrow roads all at once. The logistics are mind-boggling. The plan depends on a mix of cars, buses, and trains to move hundreds of thousands of panicked people. The potential for total gridlock, accidents, and social breakdown is immense. And what if the warning signs aren't crystal clear? A false alarm could cripple the economy and destroy public trust, making a real evacuation even harder the next time. The Italian government has even offered money for people to move out of the red zone, but very few have taken it. The simple, terrifying truth is that the city has grown too close to the mountain, wrapping itself around a geological time bomb. Our first and last line of defense is science. At the Vesuvius Observatory, a team of dedicated experts runs one of the most sophisticated volcano monitoring networks on Earth. A dense web of seismometers listens for the faintest tremors. GPS stations and satellites measure ground swelling down to the millimeter. Geochemical sensors sniff the gases seeping from the crater, looking for changes that could signal rising magma. All this vigilance is designed to do one thing buy time, precious days or weeks to attempt the impossible evacuation. And yet, this is where the story gets its final bizarre twist. The monitoring confirms the volcano is active, but stable for now, with no signs of an eruption anytime soon. As of today, you can safely hike to the crater's edge and peer into its steaming maw. This creates a jarring paradox, a popular tourist attraction that sits at the heart of one of the world's highest risk disaster zones. The science gives us a warning, but it can't defuse the bomb. The future of Vesuvius remains a profound and unsettling mystery. Its silence isn't peace. It's a slow, steady accumulation of power. Mount Vesuvius stands over the Bay of Naples, a picture of tranquil beauty. But beneath that beauty lies a history of annihilation and a deeply uncertain future. It's a volcano caught between its violent past and a potentially catastrophic destiny. The 80-year silence since 1944 is an anomaly, a statistical outlier that has volcanologists on edge. Every day, the deep magma chamber continues its slow, patient work. The tiny, constant quakes are a reminder that the system is alive, flexing its muscles in the dark. The millions who live in its shadow are caught in a gamble with geology, betting their lives that the silence will hold for another day, another year, another lifetime. But the mountain is patient. It keeps its own time, and it is quietly, inexorably recharging.